So I'm gonna put my four little rubber feet on the bottom, same distances and everything, so it's exactly uniform around here. Got in my pole, got my, my VFD. Uh, I'm ready to mount on a beautiful little plate that needs a little finishing here. You can probably look at it, you just can't get good leverage like in this action. And we were really careful too because, you know, we, we were tempted to tighten this and then use this like a bar to hold it and, you know, and, and do this. But then it's this is so delicate that if we broke this, we'd That's be a in really big Beautiful trouble. casting and we really don't want to go into the casting business. When we got this drill press, of course, like with everything with rubber feet, when the one breaks off, they just vanish, vanish. There's four holes here, there's four holes in that motor, so they just bolted those four holes right on through that thing and talk about a thing called a vibromatic. <laughs> okay? Couldn't use this thing. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Shop Adventures number 15. I'm Lance, that's Patrick, back behind the camera. Surrounded by me is a bunch of my friends. Okay, that being said, let me go over this week's topics. Um, we're, we're gonna give you some updates on the um, uh, inspection of the uh, uh, German uh, tapping machine. You know, a tapping machine is, makes threads in a hole. That The threads in the hole are because we have the little micro drill press that drills those holes. Those, still, those holes in some cases, and particularly the product we're designing, will have threaded holes using a tap machine, tapping machine to do that, and it needs to be a very small one. And that's why there's combinations like a set. These are just support equipment to our master machines, which are our 11 lathes. Those are the keys to making our, our, our actual product. Thank you. Okay, I just want to get that out of the way. Uh, we have one shout out today. It's to our friend, a fellow YouTuber, a guy we like, and he, I think this current video he has up, he's making a fly cutter. I kind of like it. He's put a lot of effort in it. He's a really nice guy. His name's John Strange. Um, he's really been good to us. And I, like I said, this community thing with YouTube means the world to us. This viewership thing and having viewers when you live where we live is the whole world to us. It means a lot to us. So we just love to express everything we can and keep things really interesting for you. So, you know, we're going to go out in the machine shop. We're going to work in the, in the workshop. We're going to do two, two things today. It's all going to be focused on the, on the German tapping machine. The reason is I, I was taking it apart. Pat had to remove some spindle parts. He gets into some problems with taking the spindle apart, using some spanner wrench deals and all that. Finally, he gets the bearing because there's two bearings that need to be replaced. So he gets that taken apart there, gives it to me like normal, and I'm doing what I call, quote, polishing which is a code word for inspection because all these little fine parts and little springs and stuff so i start getting into it he gives me these final last spindle parts and stuff and i'm looking at these threads and there's these these bearing nuts and something's not right um i, I just know it so i'm going to reject it because it's just abnormal and i'm going to explain that a little later in this video but you know in the video i explained that night I, but i saw i don't want to like repeat it here so I got these nuts, I got it figured out. Pat goes to make these things. He's gonna share that with you. Uh, we run into a shortage of not having a cutter. So, because here's the deal. Those are what we classify as bigger. Our, our machine chop machines, we just have one lathe and one little milling machine, little CNC mill. Um, that's not our forte. We're micro machinists. Everything that's most important that we do here and we're never short a tool on is micro machining. That's what the workshop. Workshop means micro machining and very clean, detailed areas. You see us do a lot of filming there. The machine shop's a little more rugged. That's be that'd be where we're going to get a nice big CNC lathe eventually. And those kinds of things are going on here now as we work toward our goals and really having a great time, by the way. So you know we don't always have every little last nook and cranny cutter holder or whatever. And so as we need it, we get it. But we don't just buy it to buy it because we we absorbed all of our efforts into our workshop versus our machine shop. I just want to give you that update. So. That's what we're going to handle in this video. Pat's going to pop in a photo or two. He's got to share. Uh, I, I don't want to do a lot of babbling on here. <laughs> so, I just want to move on a little bit. Now, I know, I know, there's a Bodine motor here. This particular Bodine motor runs Levin equipment. The Levin company makes this beautiful, beautiful machines, and they're powered by things like this Bodine motor. I'm not a big, giant, world's best fan of the Bodine Electric Company. In Chicago it's not it's not what I do but I was busy looking for some parts because I'm busy taking that that tapping machine apart 
you know, and, and you know, we're always struggling around here. We do the best we can and uh, we work really, really hard and it's our, it's our whole life and we're so thankful to have this way to share it by through YouTube and so happy that I'm willing to be a cam ham and stand in front of you and talk too long. Anyway, I'm looking for a part, I'm looking for a part, so I go into one of Pat's stash areas like I'm not supposed to or we last time found Bodine Motors like this one here that I've confiscated <laughs> for this video. I see something in the corner of my eye is a little box. That's kind of funny looking box. It says Bodine on it. That's what is it? Some kind of capacitor for a Bodine motor? Some little part gear? So I take it, look it around. It's gonna go online and see if I can find one. <laughs> look what look at me. It's a tiny. It's a little baby salesman sample Bodine motor. There are other bone there are other motor samples out there. There's not a Bodine. This is the only known Bodine sample. It's on. It's incredible. It doesn't run. It's a. It's a salesman sample. They used to take vices and machines and trunks of cars and travel the country. Salesmen would, and they would have a non-working model or a working model. But they'd always, always generally, always have a, a micro, mini, small, little model, model of whatever. We have a lot of mini stuff around here. Pat loves small. So this is a salesman sample where he goes out and demonstrates this to some potential client to buy this motor. So this little baby Bodine, it's actually got sand in it to add value. Wait, and that's the way it came. And uh, she's just a beauty. I hope I hope you like it. Um, just wanted to share it with you. You'll probably make a debut later on. Um, and uh, you see what you started, Roy, down in Arizona? You got us on this whole Bodine, and I busted Pat with this one. I said, oh, look, that, that cupboard in there, that must be our retirement fund. It must be where all our retirement funds went. <laughs> So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. So let's go out in the shop, shall we? And let's take a look around. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa. I got one more item. Look, last couple of videos have been long. Um, we know that. Uh, I want to keep it interesting for a bigger variety of crowd, but we do get specific requests for, hey, can you show us how you can put bearings into a, you know, into a very technical uh, spindle and, and, and so forth, and can... Can, can, can you show us how you're going to rebuild this machine or, or, or how to scrape away or how, how to do really detailed things about particular machines? In this case, like the Barker mill uh, that we have and like this, these, these Levin lathe, the instrument lathes that we're build, rebuilding right now in the drill press. Those are the key tools that are actually going to be the ones that make our product. But to rebuild these things, you're talking about 50 millionths. We're starting to talk about words like 50 millionths of an inch. I can't do that in 20 minute videos. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this channel around a little bit. You'll notice all of our upwindings are they're, they're, they're blue. Um, that's Shop Adventures, called. it's in color blue. There'll be another color selected, maybe two, but one for sure, and that one's gonna take, although we're never gonna miss a Monday video, um, that's not gonna happen. It's always gonna be Shop Adventures video. But what we're gonna start doing is a sideline of videos and we'll have these shop adventure videos and be kept a little more limited on their time. So, you know, time is, is, is of the essence to you and I don't wanna waste it. That's why we don't repeat things like putting a screw in a hole or turning a bearing. I'm not gonna just keep machining something and showing the same repetitive cutting over and over again. It's not, it's not educational. It's not, it's not entertaining. Um, so that forth. So, so what I'm gonna do is we're, we're gonna start like the Bodine I'm sorry, I've got Bodine on my mind over here today. Like the Levin lathes and stuff, we're gonna we're gonna do these uh, headstock spindle rebuilds. There are some requests by some very advanced companies that want to see how we do this process. It's pretty secretive, so we're gonna share it. Um, those are gonna be separate videos. That you'll identify these immediately. The color of the of the lead of the video, the the, the thumbnail will be a different color. Uh, it won't be blue. And then the bar that, that Barker will fall into spe specific machine rebuilding over long periods of time to take hours and hours to do, where we show minute details that you may not be interested in. It'll be separate color, offering a separate channel, the same channel, but a separate avenue in that channel. So you can come and follow that if that's what you're interested in. If not, Shop Adventures continues on. We make these great videos. We have a lot of fun doing it every week with my little friends with me and everything. And, uh, and, uh, and I think that'll be it. I think, I think Pat, is that about it? That's it, I think. That covers everything. You didn't give me another channel, did you? <laughs> no. I think he's trying to turn this channel off. Okay, let's see where Lance is on the tapping machine. Ah, hi. Great, let's do that. Okay, 
We got some great, just a little progress, a little bit of an update for you, and I don't know, a little lesson on being a little stupid. But let me explain, it's all right, okay? We got in our nice little beautiful wood table. Uh, this is the last one, I hope. This is the last one you keep seeing these little 12 by 18 inch tables with the little slots and everything. Actually, I got one in the other day, and it's from our supplier down in uh, San Diego, there right on the water, and, it, and it's a nice company. Unfortunately, we had a split in it, and it left a little back and forth with them, and we bought these, I don't know. I don't know, we probably buy 10 or so of them a year. Um, just, we do go through a lot. Um, we, we, we're building something. But anyway, back on track here. Um, so, so we got it in a new tabletop, so the, this one's good. It's already passed my little test, it's good. Um, we got in all these parts, they look familiar. I'm gonna put, I'm not gonna show this 100 times. So I'm gonna put my four little rubber feet on the bottom, same distances and everything, so it's exactly uniform around here. Got in my pole, got my, my VFD. Uh, I'm ready to mount on a beautiful little plate that needs a little finishing here, but it's all drilled, it's tapped, it's ready to go. We're gonna mount that, it's gonna mount on a pole here. And you know, it's gonna hold that little bit larger micro tapping machine, the German one that we put the name up on for, because I am not can't pronounce it even to this moment. It needed new bearings, remember? Um, so I wanna share with you what happened with the bearings. Um, Okay, you know, we, we, we got in, okay, well, it had fag bearings, remember we took them out, here they are. Um, clearly those are pulley bearings um, for, the, for the drive, but uh, we, it, we took out those fag bearings, we, we were hoping and we went hunting, we always go with FKF, that's our default. I don't know if you've ever put a bearing in and then turned around and wished you to put a more valuable bearing in. So we were able to find these nice, beautiful fag bearings. <laughs> The originals, same ones we took out, or, or we found them. Um, we always want to do that when it's at all possible, and we did. And uh, a little valuable lesson to be had because that, with these two SKF bearings that I'm sharing here, these go in this little spindle unit. You'll notice it needs a spanner wrench to take it apart. There's one spanner wrench at the top, a bottom there, and one spanner wrench notching on the top. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever done this. Let me sit this down just for a second, okay, Patrick? You ever had to sit with a product in your lap, a prior part, and you've got, I don't know, two half inch or nine sixteen inch wrenches, and you don't, you're not holding, you have nothing to hold it with, like a vice won't work, won't fit in a vice, whatever it is, and you're trying to pull one and push the other <laughs> to take something apart. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what this is. That's exactly what's going on here. I have no way in the world to hold this with a spanner wrench on both ends. So Patrick is gonna join me out here in the machine shop tomorrow, and he's gonna make us a part to, to go on one end of the, for the, to, to replace one of the spanner wrenches, kind of a secure holder. Then he's gonna take the spanner wrench and remove the other. This ought to work well. There's this little beam right here. This little cast part is the original part inside of the tapping machine. We are not going to hold on to this clamp to it in any way. Breaking this would be a heavy setback for us. Just let me spin that around. She's loaded, she's original. Got a little rust on her, but we're gonna clean her up real nice. Remember, this is a re this is a refurbish, not a rebuild, so it doesn't get paint. It's the only thing that doesn't get on a rebuild around here versus a refurb. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do with Patrick tomorrow. And a little lesson on bearings, because I got my butt bit, and that's what happens when you try to be a cheap o -matic. Okay. Okay, the, you know, I always like to say there's bearings and there's knock them off bearings. Okay, <laughs> they're kind of special ones. They have a perfect place somewhere for those. A local supplier in the Southern California area where we located had some bearings at a really great price. So we said, hey, wow, it's not an important application. It's going in this little thing we're making. It's, a, it's something else we're working on. And it comes, and I've got sandpaper smoother than that thing. It's just awful. Right, Patrick? It's a terrible... Oh, yeah. They, we were really disappointed. And just you know, there are 5200 series bearings, which are double angler contact bearings. Yes. Yeah. So they're supposed... We've never... We've used them before. Like, we've made uh, we've made live centers before. Like, here. Let me show... Yeah, there's uh, one in here. Quick. I got one in, I got one in here. Where did I yeah, put it? Oh, here. Right here. Yeah, right here. We... We made this live center for this lathe. Yeah, it's right in here we use one of those bearings. And in here we use an SKF. And see, and that's what Lance is saying. You know, we should have just 
weighed in and ordered, you know, what we're, what we're experienced with. Well, go ahead. I mean, yeah, $8 versus $20. What the hell is the difference? When it gets down to it and you're working with this kind of product and you're depending upon it and you're going to build this thing all back and pretty, we would never put that kind of bearing in these rebuild, refurbished machines. It was just for a little application, but a lesson learned. It still takes time to take the old ones out, put in the new ones. And then a year from now, you're going, wow, that sounds terrible. Or, oh, that doesn't spin so good anymore. Or, boy, that's sure getting hot. What the hell? Well, that's what the lessons we've learned a long time ago. But, nope, we still just broke our own cardinal rule. So I'm just right. done with it. I don't. If it's a knock a mirror off damn bearing or whatever it is, I'm just not going for it. Um, but we learned. So that's SKF has never let us down. Put never. them in once, I'm done. I'm not saying everything's perfect in life. And they're certainly not a sponsor of ours. They don't even know us. But i just like to share when we can afford something... And it's the best we can buy. We'll share it with you. But you'll see a lot of things around here that are not necessarily the best, but they're what we use to get by. We're not, you know, that's what we're doing to survive. Um, but when they're the best, such as SKF is, you're going to hear loud and clear that that's all we use and it's only what we use. Okay, thank you. Okay, as promised, we are back with Patrick. He's going to give us an update on that last little bit of the... Uh, uh, of, the, of the tapping machine problem that we experienced. We weren't able to get the bearings out, and he was trying to figure out a way we're going to do that. Uh, so here we are. Let's just let Pat take over because I'm not real clear on it. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Okay, let me update you guys. Um, okay, the last time you saw this, because we kind of took it apart already, um, when you saw this last, you saw this with two pulleys. Okay, one was on the bottom, one was on the top like this. Oops. So it kind of looked like this, okay. So we had two pulleys, we had this bar, and the problem we had was trying to take these bearing nuts off. Okay, let me disassemble this. Okay, and if you notice, okay, these are slotted nuts, and there's two identical ones on each side. They're holding the bearings, which, which like a are, sandwich right then are that are then pressed into the pulleys okay so the problem was uh yesterday lance first he tried removing the nuts by using two of the spanner wrenches you know he had one on the top one on the bottom and then using two hands like this you know he he tried t loosening a nut and just couldn't get good leverage and then i tried it and i couldn't get you just can't get you could probably look at it, you just can't get good leverage like in this action. And we were really careful too because, you know, we, we were tempted to tighten this and then use this like a bar to hold it and, you know, and, and do this. But then it's, this is so delicate that if we broke this, we'd That's be in really big beautiful trouble. Beautiful casting and we really don't want to go into the casting business. Right. You know, because remember, this is a really old machine. This at least, this is about 40 years old at least. So, and we aren't going to get a replacement, so we'd have to repair it. Okay, so, uh, so we both tried that. We're unsuccessful. I think Lance updated you guys yesterday on the video that he was going to bring me in to make a part. Okay, and the idea we had was I was going to make basically a spanner socket. So I was going to take a, a bar, about an inch bar of steel, you know, drill two holes, press in a couple of dowel pins. So basically it'd be like the spanner wrench pins on top. Can at the bottom of the bar, I was gonna mill two flats. And the idea was we'd be able to take this part, uh, clamp it in the vise, and then when it's clamped in the vise, I'd be able to hold on to the spindle, you know, put it in, put it on top, and then I'd have really good leverage. So like this, I'd be able to go onto the top nut and then just screw it right off. Okay, but then, so that was, that was our plan when I woke up this morning. But then when I woke up this morning, I don't know, it just came to my, just, it was just a thought that we actually own a really large spanner wrench. This is really more automotive. And yeah, we do our work on our own Jeep, so we, we, we're, yeah. we're self sufficient here. <laughs> yeah, we have a Jeep that we love to work on too. If so. you own a Jeep, you have to be a mechanic. Yeah. yeah, but we just we forget, you know, we work on these little tiny tools all the time and we forget the large tools we own. So this gave us an idea. See, what's really nice about this, if, if you look at the small, the smaller uh, spanner wrenches, 
you know, they just move back and forth. There's no mechanism to keep them set. See where this has the adjustment screw. So when you set this, see when you set this for this nut into these slots, okay, it's not gonna move. It's it's staying there. Okay, so that, that, that gave us an idea. We basically put this on top of this piece of wood. Lance held this with just one hand like this. And I was able just to put the spindle on like that, you know, the pulleys were on both sides, of course. And then like that, I was able to get, you know, great leverage and I was able to take this off really easy. So, and once I did that, once I took one nut off, um, basically once the nut's off, the pulley's still on with the bearing that's pressed on here. And the way I took that off was I used one of our bearing tools and I basically, put it in like this so let's say it's like this so and then we took it to our hydraulic press just put this on the table and then very easily we're able to press this piece out okay Perfect. and then once so once that side was out I basically just chucked this chuck this part see once this because this was on once this side was out I was able to chuck this in the lathe and in, in a three jaw chuck and then once that's in the chuck, that gave me great leverage to then get this nut off. And then same thing, I took it to the press and then, you know, press this out. And, and uh, we Sorry. didn't share that with you. You know, we thought about it. We said, you know, maybe, maybe we should be filming this on camera. But then we thought about it. You know, we've already shared a couple of uh incidences where we i think we pressed out a bearing and something else on a hydraulic press and you know after a couple of times we were like do you want to share oh yeah see remember now this channel is all about a journey the journey of two best friends living in a rural desert town working to rebuild machines and then make a final product and have it perfected pro a little miniature product made well that being said we don't want to be in the repetitive recording business. I'm not interested. I've, I've put a screw in a hole, as many of you probably already have. I'm not going to show that. So we, we're only going to do that once in a while. You know, we've, we've mentioned, like the Barker. That's a full-blown recorded video. If you really want to see how we operate from start to finish, other than the Barker's prepped and ready to go, but, but we're going we're gonna to watch us build this, the, the reassemble the Barkley Barker yeah. meal from start to finish with its secret Barker product installation from the factory. Right. Secret. Secret. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, you know, and it was just recent. You know, if we don't do something for about six months to a year, sure, we'll re, we'll do, we, we'll re-show it on video again. But something we've just done so recently, you, you know, we yeah, don't want to... We really want to share uh, what we're doing every day moving on forward. We don't, we don't want right. to sit here and, and make the same part over and over and over again. I just, you know, it's, yeah. We'll be doing enough of that in the future. Okay. So, okay, so uh, I was able to get all the parts taken, you know, I even pressed out all the, bear the bear two bearings that were in here. So these, all these parts are now going to Lance. And he's actually gonna, uh, yeah, as you can see, this has a problem with the paint coming off. Lance is gonna take care of that. I won't, um, Lance will share that with you later. But um, I'm, compl I'm actually done here. Uh, my job's done here. I'm gonna go back with my flumes. Uh, well, he's got motor. a lot of confidence in me, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, last week's video, if you remember, I was waiting for the bearings for our second flu motor. Those were supposed to have come Friday. They didn't come, but they did come Monday. So I have those ready to install on the second flume. So I'm going to get that done and share that with you on video. And anything else, Lance? Yeah, 11. <laughs> oh, and then 11, yeah. We told you last week... Levens just right around the corner. Now understand, levens are in this in this shop. Leaven to us is harnage to someone who's our, our monarch ten double E. <laughs> that that's that's our Rolls Royce of machines. Those are our finest pieces of equipment, and those are the main equipment that are going to make our product. So they're they're going to make the big base of our product. Big yeah. micro world, mind you. And that's why we keep re-emphasizing the, the 11, the 11, 11. Those are the two base machines we start with. And all the rest of these machines, we need them. But they're just support machines for the main product. Right. Okay. That's what we wanted to share. Yeah. 
Okay, I think we're done. That's it. We're going to clean some parts, and we'll be back doing some assembly and stuff. We'll see Pat later. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's get a status update on the tapping machine from Lance. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. I don't know. Um, this, this is a journey, so it's all about sharing a little bit. And so let's do a little sharing. You know, this micro uh, tapping machine, uh, I'm just going to give you some updates on it, like Pat's out here to see. And you see the wood board came in. It's got its little feet. They're exactly one and a quarter by one and a quarter. That's where they go on every corner of every table every time. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we've been making these for quite a while. Normally, you probably ask yourself, well, it's got a base plate already, unlike those other machines we've been doing. Why, do, why, why are you putting on a wood table? Well, this lets us mount accessories and stuff later. It makes it more, um, more rigid. It doesn't vibrate across the table, and it's easier to transport because remember these are not dedicated workstations. These go to port. These are portable to take to a workstation, work with, and put back upon a shelf. Because we call our prime real estate around here our work our workspaces. So those those workstations or spaces those those are the prime real estate, and what we put on them and what we work with has to be easy to get around with. Okay, so that's that's why there's so much of this stuff that's not used daily all day. Like the lathes are committed to each table. These are portable. Okay. That being said, and you know I have a one pet peeve, but Pat will remind you that I have multiple pet peeves apparently. There's these rubber feet that come on the bottom of these tables, and they remember we told you when the machines come they don't have them. Uh, we also wanted to let you know, like, you know, this motor is a three-phase motor. So I guess I'll take two of them out. Okay. This motor is a three-phase motor. It mounts right here with the pulleys over here, and then the shafts here for the the okay, let's show the motor real quick. You want to squeeze her in? Yeah, just, so, mm -hmm. just remember. Okay, so that's the, the three-phase motor right there. Yeah, this is it, and, and it's and it's gonna get. It's got little holes. And while we're here, even though I'm not supposed to, you know, we we just couldn't resist. Uh, we're supposed to just refurbish this machine. A full rebuild means paint. A refurbish means just no paint. That's the only difference around here, by the way. Everything else is the same. All the bearings. So we had to do this one to represent that name I can't pronounce in German. <laughs> Pat's already put the label on for me, but we did we did powder coat this when we were powder coating that German drill press. We caught this in there and just put it on. It's just a decorative front cover, actually, right? And uh, yeah, and so we just had to squeeze it in. And uh, so anyway, so that motor is a three phase motor. It's big for us for capacity wise. Right, that's a big motor. When we got this drill press, of course, like with everything with rubber feet, when the one breaks off, they just vanish, vanish. There's four holes here, there's four holes in that motor, so they just bolted those four holes right on through that thing and talk about a thing called a vibromatic. <laughs> okay? Couldn't use this thing. I mean, I mean I almost had to tie it down like some kind of a dog on a leash so it wouldn't walk off the table. So we've used these. We don't know which size yet, I'm still working on it today. And these just screw in. So they're kind of a little bearing, like like a rubber foot that goes between the either one and a, goes between the uh, yeah, there you go. Goes between the base plate. So you got rubber feet on the bottom of the table. You got rubber feet between the motor and this base plate for the tapping machine. And then the motor mounts on here and it reduces it down, makes us a much more rigid machine. You ever tried to, to drill or tap a micro hole? You already can't see this thing with the, with all kinds of loops on and everything, and bright lights. <laughs> and now, now you're gonna have like any vibration motion. It's never gonna happen. You never see it. So that's our job, make it perfect. Just want to give you a little update on the on that, and then we'll let you know. The VFD they do have a big heat sink in the back. They do get hot, so we just whipped up one of these little aluminum plates, and boy, that's got a pretty nice finish on it. <laughs> it's got some. We worked at it a little bit there, spare time, you know. So this is going to mount on there. That's going to mount on one of those pretty black poles like this one here. It's going to mount to two of these through there. Two, so it's going to mount like it's going to basically mount like that, and then have that VFD in the front. And the pole, instead of doing it this way, this table's different because it has a base and it had some space, and we don't really have a lot of accessories in the future, but there's a little space around, is we went ahead and bought the other kind of pole mount. Instead of putting it on the side of the table, which I don't want to do like we did here, like right here, I mean, we bought this kind where it's going to go in the hole. You notice everything stays wrapped in plastic around here. That's not a mistake. The plastic's still on the wood table. I'm almost like going to Granny's house and she's got the plastic over the furniture and the little runners down the hallway. You know, leading down the hallway to the bathroom. You know those plastic runners? <laughs> okay. We leave the plastic on everything until it's actually done. 
We take it off. I have to oil this board, finally mount everything. But this just reduces all the dents, dings, and chips and things that you'd get from... It's just one of those things you learn. I was polishing parts. I'm going to move on a little bit because this is part of the trapping machine. I was polishing parts, and this one in particular because, you know, this is our main, main component there. And, Pat, what do they call this? The spindle part? Okay, this is the part where, if you remember... Uh, the two pulleys attached to this. Okay. And this is where I removed the pulleys and the bearings, and we had the uh, bearing nuts. Oh, like sure. The two bearing nuts. That's... See, these are the bearing nuts right there. Okay, well, wait, while we're here, this is pretty good. Remember, we talk about bearings. We got fag bearings. We got SKF bearings. These are all the five. There's only five bearings in the whole tapping machine, period. So two are going to go in here, which are the actual spindle, and three go in here. These are just the pulleys for the belt drive. They go from the motor over to the top of the, of the, forgot to mention that. Idler pulleys. Idler pulleys, thank you. Okay. Now let me shut down that beautiful shiny part for a minute. <clears throat> that was another Friday night event. <laughs> Next to that is two really critical parts. These are these little micro, these nuts, these are the bearing nuts go on the top. So basically, let me set my down my cleaning stick. And you know, basically they're gonna go on here He's going to make you two new ones because during our inspection, when I do the quote polishing, that polishing remark is actually not a remark. It's it's a it's a methodical way of doing inspection on fine parts like this. You're looking, you're checking for stress threads, uh, polished shiny threads, something that doesn't look right. Maybe two parts they just don't thread together right. This one passed was passing the test and it failed. It turns out that these threads are just too flattened. They're 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 the thinnest, shallowest threads I've ever seen on two components. I just don't like it. So I kicked it back and told Patty to solve it because it's not going to work. These are holding this, going to hold this together for a long time and keep those bearings in place. So he's going to make you two new ones and make this all better for us. And uh, we'll get off to him in a little bit. And uh, that's all I have over here today, right? I think I think that's all I have to share. Oh, the uh, lever. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just saved the best for last. Mm -hmm. This was green in the video we've been making here. Um, this is the uh, tapping head lever. That was it was green. It was between the two bearings. If you remember, it was kind of it was in the middle here, and it had these big caps on the ends. If you kind of remember when Pat was going to take it apart. And we don't want it to break. I was panicking. It's a, it's a cast part. It's real. It's just real. Sh it's really crudely made. It's tough. Anyway, I was able to clean it up really good. I gave it the famous cold bluing, and I'm going to go with that because this, again, this is not a rebuild. This is a refurbish, and we kind of like this black finish. I think it'll last a lot longer in the particular it's in because it's going to have to hit the reverse and so forth. So there you go. I just want to share it with you. It did clean up really well. It's just going to make this look a little bit even nicer when it gets done. We can't wait to finish it off. And you can see we're getting really close. Just make the nuts and we're going to start the reassembly and get her done. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see where Lance is on the tapping machine. Oh, he's busy. Okay. Hey, welcome to the workshop area. This is better known as the white coat area. This is where, you know, no real work gets done. No one's <laughs> All the micro machining and all the assemblies done in here because it's so clean. It's a reverse air area. So in other words, when you come in this room, it's always under pressure. It's always pushing air out, never letting any air in. You'd learn that if you live in a rural desert town like we do. Okay, the dust is horrendous. Okay, I, I'm here. I've delivered back to Patrick the micro tapping machine. The tapping machine is to tap holes and put threads in micro small holes from the micro drill press, the German one. So when we drill these little micro drill holes in our little product we're actually going to be making in the new year, this is going to tap those holes so that two pieces can be attached. Just so anyone doesn't understand, that's what this is. Um, I'm done. I've mounted it on the board. I've mounted the tables. I've completely polished this machine, which means it's fully inspected. Any flaws, cracks, penetration issues, anything. It's got its VFD, and it, I, I hope that camera's not picking up too much glare from all that beautiful polish work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just fun. Hey, I look at the beauty of that plate. Okay. okay, now this is at the Pat's stage. It's a little unique problem. This is at Pat's place right now. However, 
Uh, you'll notice it's, it's in here. It's going to get. He does the wiring. He's got to do the spindle building here in the clean room and all that kind of thing. Put the bearings in and so forth, and then make you a, you know, make you the uh, motor belt and all those kinds of things you've seen a few times. Okay. There's a twist here though. In the polishing, when I was doing the inspection polishing work and the scotch brighting and all that beautiful stuff, there was a flaw with the spindle, a little bronze spindle that has its little threads. You know, the little the little bearing nuts, there's one on the top, one on the bottom of this little thing with the bearings in the middle and all that stuff, the pulleys and stuff going on. And these threads are really minute. Okay, here's what I mean by that. It's a 0.5 millimeter thread, pitch thread, and it's in a 14 millimeter diameter bore. That is an unheard of small size for that diameter, and we're just not geared for that. So we didn't have the necessary tool, right, Patrick? So you, we had to order a tool in order to do that. That's correct, right. We didn't have the tool. We don't have that internal threading tool for that small of a bore. Right, we just, we're just, we, like, we, we just don't, we're just not geared for the, the bigger machine shop areas where our lathe's at and where our CNC little tabletop mill is. And, and we, we, we have good tools. We have good good holders. We have a lot of stuff, but, but that's not our focus, not our specialty. This micro machining world, if you, if I came out here and told Patrick I needed something, he told me he didn't have a cutter or a tool, I'd blow my top because we have every single tool and part ever needed to produce anything in the micro machine scale. But and we're just, weak on the machine side. And I just want to add, Go ahead, you Patrick. know, we could, we could probably even uh, grind our own tool, but since... See, we have the, in, the threading inserts, so we just need the tool holder, and it's just easier for us to just purchase that instead of spending all the time grinding the tool and making sure it's all perfect. We want to come around. Why don't you come around and show oh, the, sure. the, the the tapping machine, though? This is where we're at. The VFD's mounted. The table's mounted. The, she's all ready to go. She's she's carryable. Boy, she's heavy with that three phase motor on it. Boy, oh boy, is that a strong one. Anyway, we're looking forward to being able to tap the holes that we actually drill with the micro drill press. So, this is getting kind of neat, and uh, and you know we're gonna we're gonna be starting now that this is on hold. I'll be out working on the uh, lathe, the eleven the eleven lathe accessories for the eleven lathe. And if you've ever wanted to see what a micro mini itsy bitsy cross slide is, I have eleven heavy duty cross slide. They're pretty unique. And she's a bulletproof little baby. And I've got to go through about three or four of these accessories of his, including a turret. A miniature turret for a, for a for eleven lathe. These are really exotic accessories, and that's how we're going to make the big base parts of the product that we're going to be making and sharing on on the channel in the new year. So uh, I'll be working on some very tiny little screws and parts, parts so small that make your head spin. But we're used to that. That's we're real comfort zone there. We have a gear to, we're geared to hold those kind of parts. So that's what I'm going to be working on while Pat's waiting. When the tool comes in, Pat will make off these uh, bearing nuts. Uh, We'll get this thing wrapped up, get it, get it going through testing the same way we're doing the micro drill press, and we'll get on to the 11s, and we're just, this means I'm moving on the 11s faster, and I'm kind of excited about it, so thank you. Bye, thanks. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this week's video, and please don't hesitate to subscribe. And did you know, we really do value getting those comments. We love to answer any question you may have for us. Thank you.